The key here is that this chart overall for Bitcoin is actually not a bad chart. Again, watch this low level here. Hello everyone, today Gareth Soloway talks about our earth shattering move in the stocks, earnings of various big tech stocks, release of the Fed's minutes, BTC price action, key levels, patterns and predictions, and much more insightful. Join our vibrant community of like-minded enthusiasts as we decode market dynamics, discuss cutting-edge trends, and share valuable tips to navigate the exciting realms of crypto, Bitcoin, and stocks. Subscribe now! hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin BTC $37,187 sought to rematch 18-month highs into November 21, as order book activity gave one analyst a sense of deja vu. Data from Cointelegraph Markets Pro and TradingView showed BTC price momentum building to top out at $37,770 the day prior. Now circling $37,400, Bitcoin remained in a range that had also characterized the second week of the month. For on-chain monitoring resource material indicators, however, the market was more akin to Q1 this year the period that marked the start of Bitcoin's recovery from post-FTX lows. Analyzing order book data, it suggested that a major liquidity provider, which it informally called the notorious bid at the time, could be shaping bid support once again. Specifically, bid liquidity had come and gone at $33,000 seven times in the last 30 days. The S&P 500 is finally getting into a level where you would expect some resistance. Now, listen, this has been one of the most meteoric rises in the markets in a straight line that we have ever seen. All right, if you look at this, this is over, I think it's about 11% move on the SPY. The NASDAQ's up over 14% in a straight line. I talked about this yesterday, and I'll mention it again because it is earth shattering. Maybe people don't really understand the gravity of this, but if you take the top five stocks, those trillion dollar names. You take the NVIDIAs, the Apples, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Googles, and you look at their composition in the S&P, in the NASDAQ 100, it is the biggest it has ever been. That's a lot of chips in one little bag. All right, so what do we see here? Well, we have a trend line going back over here. Very quickly, we take this pivot top, which again was basically the all-time high on the market, right? We take it to the secondary high recently right there, and we hit that yesterday right there. The SPY did hit that level. Now, just above that level, there's a gap fill, so you could pierce by a fraction here and tag the gap fill. It's about $2 higher on the SPY. But nonetheless, this is a pivotal level. And what I find fascinating is that the S&P and the NASDAQ are at pivotal levels going into not only the Fed minutes today, which the minutes are not as big as kind of the, the Fed statement, right? The minutes are the minutes from the last meeting, but also the NVIDIA earnings. And NVIDIA earnings, they have become a massive player for the markets because of how big NVIDIA is as a company and because of AI and what it means to the overall markets. All right, so we know that the markets are into key levels. We are seeing the markets pulling back a fraction today. A little bit of a down move. We're seeing the 10-year yield bounce just a little bit. The dollar is coming off some lows early, starting to bounce, and that's bringing the markets in just a fraction, though. I want to be clear. This rally, it's like a minor blip on the screen of what we're seeing today, and I honestly don't expect a big sell-off until we at least get the Fed minutes, and then NVIDIA earnings will be the key catalyst to either a breakout or a pullback in the markets. All right, so that's where we stand on the SPY. Looking at the NASDAQ, take a look at this, guys. So we have a couple things that I want you to focus on. So number one, this was that handle kind of pattern formation that we talked about, right? Here's your bigger cup and your handle. Now my issue, and I talked about this in the game plan, is that generally cups need to be formations like this where the high here is equal to the high here approximately. Here, the high and this 
this is the high, it is a lower high. So it's not the ideal cup and handle pattern. It doesn't mean it can't work out, but in general, that's not the ideal scenario. It affects probabilities just a little bit, okay? So now what we wanna do is say, okay, well, where are we on the charts? If we take this pivot high right here and we stretch it to this high right here, yesterday we just touched that high there. Now we do have a parallel. There's a parallel down here. If we do go up on NVIDIA earnings, the target price on the QQQ is this upper trend line here. And I want to show you that. So what I'm going to do is zoom out so we can really see what this chart is kind of unveiling to us. So what we can see here is if we take this area here, we take the low of the COVID low and we stretch it to the October and November lows right here, it gives us a trend line. Now drag a parallel up and what we can see is it comes right through here, right through here, right through here, right through here and here, and we connect it right to that high and that gives us that $400 level on the QQQ. So in a bull sense, let's say that Nvidia blows it out and is up 10% on earnings or 5% on earnings, this would be your target price on the QQQ, 400, that even number, all right? Now, let's take a look at NVIDIA going into earnings. And this is where I have fun, guys, because I get to play around with charts. Notice there's no trend lines on this chart to speak of. So let's just have some fun. What if we connect a parallel through a couple levels here? So let's do that right now. Let's take our trend line. I'm going to take this high right here, and let's put a line there. Let's stretch it out here and bring it up to this secondary high right here with a pierce right here. Now notice price is just about or into that level now. Now what I like to do is I say, okay, let's put that line in place. Now let's drop our parallel and see if there's anything that aligns that makes sense to give us a credence for this technical level. So what we do is we drop it down. And the first thing I noticed, which is pretty darn cool, is that you basically have this pivot and this pivot aligning with that parallel. So you have these pivots up here, right? And going all the way back to here, and then you have this pivot and this pivot. So now I'm like, okay, well, I kind of might be onto something here, but we're not 100% sure. Let's drop it down a little bit more. What if we drop it down here, and then I'm like, holy cow, this is some cool stuff now. Because now, look at this. Look at what we now have. Pivot to pivot to low pivot to low pivot there. So it starts to make you aware that this trend line here is significant as we continue to drop it down. Now, I haven't done it any further than this, but let's even see if we drop it down lower. Look at that, that's so freaking cool. All right. So now we just drop the parallel lower and look at the alignment. And this shows you, by the way, what's so cool about this and what I love about trading and charting is that it essentially reveals things like, like you look at this chart and you're like, wow, this is just a crazy chart. But there's actually a method here. There's, it's, it looks chaotic, but there's actually some form of normality or reasoning behind this. And what I mean by that is now look at this. Look at this area here, right to that. It's another parallel. Let's, let's even take it a step further here. Uh, and again, I have no clue if we're gonna find anything else, but what we can do is we can take this here, and we can drop it down. Well, again, look at that. Again, pivot right through all these bases. Look how it got above and it chopped right there before breaking up right along those levels. And listen, I don't want to bore you guys with this. It like fascinates me. But again, my point is, <laughs> look at that. That's pretty darn cool too. Wow. So I, I just got to keep going with this because look at that. Look at that center point and look at this little low right there. And then lastly and not least, let's take that away. If we drop this parallel down, you basically bring it into these lows right here, right? So anyways, my point is this, is that to me, this is a pivotal level. Now, does it guarantee that NVIDIA is going to stop here? No, it doesn't, right? Um, but there's no kidding that this area here is somewhat significant on the chart. When it aligns that many times in parallels, 
you have to take it seriously as resistant. And take a look at what's going on with Bitcoin. Bitcoin remains in its wedge pattern. So again, just to be clear, I'm only gonna touch on this for a second. We continue to have support down here and we have resistance up here. We were floating up, now we're having a little bit of a down day. I continue to be in the position of being short some of the altcoins, as again, I do believe that based on Bitcoin dominance chart is coming, it came into support, and based on the extension moves that the alts are probably at a short-term top. Doesn't mean they're at a long-term top, just due for a pullback. We're seeing that in stocks like, or in coins like Solana and Avalanche and Matic and different ones like that they're pulling back beautifully as well. But again, the key here is that this chart overall for Bitcoin is actually not a bad chart. Again, watch this low level here. If it breaks below, that would be problematic. If it gets above here, then you're looking at a breakout on the chart. Hey guys, the 10 year yield has a lot of support here. And we talked about the pot potential that the 10 year yield could actually stall somewhere around here and the dollar could continue lower. That's at least what the charts are telling us, right? So again, we have the trend line here, uh, going up right through this level here. We have a flat top right through here and they are right in that vicinity. So that tells me at least for now, we're at support. And today we're basically flat to negative on the 10 year yield. We're still holding that technical level. Now flipping over to the daily chart, excuse me, the, De the Dixie chart, take a look at this. The dollar continues to go lower. And again, this is kind of what I was saying yesterday in the game plan and I choreographed this perfectly saying the dollar broke key support. This should go down further. Yesterday we sold more, today we're even selling on the US dollar. It is going lower. So again, yields are starting to stall out, which is a stagflationary signal, right? Weaker dollar, yields are starting to stall out here. That's stagflationary, and that again is one of the worst signals that we can get in the market. If rates are gonna stay high and the dollar collapses because of a weak economy, that is not a good scenario. Now where is the dollar likely going real quick here? Let's zoom out, and I showed you guys this yesterday, but let's just go over it again. We got a pivot trend line here. And so you're looking at this area here, right around 101, 101.50, 101.75, somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. Now, briefly, let's quickly go over a couple other charts here. So I want to show you guys Microsoft's chart because Microsoft was all over the map yesterday, but it did close sharply higher, but it closed into a key level. All right, now what key level was that? Well, we can see very clearly if I step out of frame here, almost out of frame, is that if we go back here, we can see, look at this. Look at the trend line starting down here. This is your COVID low, and let me apologize for having those lines on there. COVID low to here, right through here, and right to that top, pivot high to pivot high, and right to that top. So again, Microsoft is at resistance here. The question again is, is it gonna pull back? And if so, how much? Remember that we did talk about how the last bull run, right? The last bull big run, you essentially got the same amount. This dollar move here is equal to this dollar move here. Same to almost to the penny, the dollar move right into resistance. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.